Welcome to vlog 23. So apparently all you need to do to appeal to a gay audience is a bit of nudity. And if you don't believe me, look at the reactions to Afterglow at the Suffolk Playhouse. What? Time Out gave it one star. Paul Vale called it gratuitous. Where's my shirt? Sorry about that. I managed to find my shirt. <laughs> Still can't find my trousers. But anyway, <laughs> on with the show. So it was the Tonys this week. Did you stay up and watch it till four in the morning? I didn't. But I was delighted when I woke up on Monday morning to find out that Stephanie J. Block had won for The Share Show. I saw Stephanie in The Share Show while I was in New York last year and she is phenomenal. It is such a good show. I can't wait. I hope it comes to the UK. Meanwhile, Haydenstown did rather well. Nice little British export over there. I'll be honest, when I saw it in the UK, I didn't really like it. But a lot of people defended it. And it won eight of the 14 awards that it was nominated for. And it was also incredible to see Amy Stroker win for Oklahoma. She became the first actress in a wheelchair to win a Tony. So on Monday, I was at Mamma Mia's Cast Change. I am not gonna lie, I love this show. And I go every year to see the brand new cast. Now in its 20th year, Lucy Mae Barker is back in the West End as Sophie, having played the part in the international tour for three years. And she is joined by Maz Murray, who also returns to the show. Having previously played Tanya, she is now Donna. And oh my, they are incredible together. It stands to reason, having played it for three years, this part is in Lucy's blood. And she is incredible. She's honestly the best Sophie I've seen since Charlotte Wakefield. What she brings to this part, she knows this part inside and out. And not only is she a fantastic singer, but her acting is incredible. And as for Maz Murray, she has such a tone and richness to her voice, as well as being a formidable actress. The pair of them are honestly the best casting I have seen in 20 years. Joining the cast as Sky is GSA graduate Cameron Burt, who I saw last year playing opposite Luke Bayer in a workshop presentation of a musical called Prom Queen at the Other Palace. And he is a talent, very easy on the eye and a brilliant performer. Now people talk about Waitress being this brand new, all creative female team, but 20 years ago, Mamma Mia was ahead of its game with the all female creative team of Katherine Johnson, Felidia Lloyd and Judy Kramer as writer, director and producer of Mamma Mia. And it stands to reason the show is still going after 20 years. It's brilliant. Like I say, I see this show every year and it was sad to see Robert Knight and Eamon Cox leave this year, but they are going on the international tour. So I wish them all the best of luck as they join Sharon Sexton and Rob Fowler. That is definitely gonna be worth checking out. I took along my mates Adam and Nick who'd never seen the show and they loved it. Also was there was Steph Parry. Just can't get rid of her. She was enjoying the show from the other side of the stage. Dale Evans has opened a competition to have one lucky winner join him in his concert on the August the 31st. Now, if you are an aspiring MT performer or a student, have a look at his tweet and find out how to get involved and how to enter. And you could be singing with Dale at the Zadell. So on Tuesday, I saw Afterglow at the Suffolk Playhouse. And I'm just gonna say it, 
I liked it. Now this production has divided opinion. Time Out gave it one star. And the other publications weren't too far behind with two and three stars. I don't really know where I sit on this because I generally thought it was pretty good. I'll be honest, before I saw it, it did look like a typical gay play where they cast beautiful looking people, get them naked and talk about trivial things. And some might say that that is exactly what it is. But to me, this show has a lot more sentiment and a lot more heart than people are giving it credit for. Yes, it does contain a lot of nudity from the offset. But once that gets out of the way, for me, the scenes really came alive. And these three actors are actually really good. It would be easy to dismiss and write them off as just pretty boys who can act. But they really, really find the inner depth to these characters. Now, it's a story about a gay couple who introduce a third person into their relationship and the complications they're in. These characters are true representations of people I know. And these stories are very common. I did sit during the nude scenes thinking, is this necessary? To be honest, I've seen a lot of gay plays that rely on nudity to get the audience to come in. It's a sign of the times. It's just the way it is. Theatres like Above the Stag and The King's Head purposely encourage nudity to get people in. And this is no exception. And to be honest, a lot of the controversy centres around the fact that these naked actors have a shower scene. That is nothing new. Jack O'Connell did it recently in the West End in a cat on a hot tin roof. And nobody questioned it. Also, the last time I saw nudity at the Suffolk Playhouse was in a play called Gods and Monsters. And if you want to know a funny story about that production, read my blog for more information. Now, this week was also the third anniversary of the Orlando shootings, where 49 people were shot dead in a Pulse nightclub. I just wanted to take a moment to remember those people. On Wednesday, I got to interview Nick Hayes, the new star of the touring production of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. And he, he, he's rather handsome, isn't he? We got to chat all about his career and about Jason Donovan. I'll tell you about Jason. Tell so. me about him. So was he part of the casting process? Yeah. Was he? Yeah. My inner 10 year old was doing backflips because I got to read with him in my final. Aww. So I was like, all I had going around in my head was especially for you while I'm doing these lines with him. Oh my God, and he was amazing as well. Where you're gonna do that, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. But he was brilliant as well, such a good actor. Loads, gave loads. It was kind of awesome. Now you can see the whole video on my YouTube channel. After that, I joined Christian Lunn for his birthday at the Piano Works West End. We had a very, very drunken night celebrating his 27th birthday. YouTube sensation and theatre lover, Amy Lovett, did an incredible job of faking a trip to the Tonys. If you didn't see it, check out her video on her YouTube channel. Hello, my name is Amy Lovett and I lied to you. I didn't go to the Tony Awards. I stayed at home and sat in this bed till 4.30 in the morning. Woo! I'm slightly envious that I didn't come up with that idea. It's brilliant. Now, Elegies for Angels, Punks and Raging Queens at the Union announced that it raised £2,625.53 for Mad Trust. 
That is incredible. Thank you to everybody who donated. So on Thursday, I went to see The Flies at the Bunker Theatre. Ooh, it was bad. This is the 10th anniversary production, having been produced before by Exchange Theatre. Exchange Theatre is a company that specialises in international works. And this piece in particular is being presented in both French and English on alternating evenings. So whether you want to see it in either language, you can book up and find out. Novel, and a great idea in concept, whether it's got floods of French people going to see it, I don't know. As an English person watching the English version, it was just awkward and tedious. It's not a great play. I will advocate, though, they did an interesting thing by having a live band do the entire soundscape. But the three-piece band stood at the back of the stage, just looked awkward at points. Especially when they tried to act. Um, and speaking of trying to act, some of the performances were sketchy. With the exception of Mina Ryan, who was in Game of Thrones. She was actually really, really good. So if you're a Game of Thrones fan, go and see her. If you want three hours of your lives back, don't go and see it. Sorry, that's really harsh, isn't it? It just wasn't a great show. It is on until the 6th of July and is only £16 for a ticket. So if you are free and do fancy it, go to the cinema. <laughs> Now, everybody's talking about the film adaptation of Jamie. Wow. The casting has been announced. Richard E. Grant, Sarah Lancashire and newcomer Erdang musical theatre student Max Harwood. As well as a little cameo from John McCrea. This film looks like it's shaping up to be incredible. This week saw the opening of a brand new theatre cafe on St Martin's Lane. The original is still open on a Shaftesbury Avenue, but this is a bigger, larger venue, which people were queuing up around the block to see Rachel Tucker open on Thursday. And it looks impressive. Well done to the theatre cafe for providing a home for theatre nerds and chocolate lovers alike. Whether you like a coffee or a piece of cake, while you chat to mates about theatre, it's a great hub for people who love theatre. And it's so encouraging to see it doing so, so well. On Friday, I was at the Grand in Clapham to see the first performance by The Spice Gals. Now the Spice Gals, like Gals Aloud, are a drag tribute act to the pop group. And they are <laughs> incredible. Here are a few videos from the night. <laughs> the look of that make sure you get yourself to the underbelly festival on august the 15th for their full show honestly you don't want to miss it zigga zigga now on saturday afternoon i went to see white pearl at the royal court theater 
I'm just going to say it. I didn't get it. I didn't or like it. It is a satire about Asian culture and the cosmetic industry. And although this piece does address some big issues, I didn't think it was that great. It looked, the set looked incredible and was visually stunning. But across the board, for me, it wavered between some incredible performances and some questionable ones. I couldn't tell whether it was just the style or the direction, but to me, some of the performances were awkward. Now, a lot of the reviews that I read seem to encourage and advocate the importance of this play for providing a voice for Asian women and how important it was to see Asian women being put on a stage and giving them visibility. Now, although that's great, and obviously I support diversity and encourage that too, it doesn't excuse the play for being terrible. Not that I'm saying it was terrible, but was it good enough? Maybe it's me, I don't know. Time Out gave it four stars, whereas earlier in the week, it gave Afterglow one. I'm just saying I wouldn't agree with either of those. The cast gave their final performance on Saturday evening. Meanwhile, on Saturday evening, I went to see the Spice Girls again. <sighs> Having seen them earlier this month in Manchester, I could not resist the chance to see them again in Wembley, where, 21 years ago, I originally saw them. And this time, I was given a Gold Circle ticket. It was incredible. I was there in the Gold Circle, right up close and personal with the Spice Girls and Jess Glynn and Simon Fuller, their manager. It was a night to remember. And so many people were there as well. I bumped into a few stagey faces as I walked around. Honestly, I had the time of my life. And if Mel B is to be believed, the Spice Girls are taking the tour to Australia next year. <sighs> I'll be booking my flight. Here are a few of the videos that I took of the night. Um, so I'm back at the Spice Girls, but this time I'm Golden Circle! I'm that close.
afternoon, I was at Zadell for the first in a brand new series called West End Wilmer in Conversation With. This is a brand new series where Ed Baker and his mother sit down with West End performers to talk openly about their careers. Now, I've known Ed for years. And to be honest, he is one of the pioneering bloggers that I looked up to when I started out my blog. And I bought my ticket and went along to support him and his work. But I'll be honest, as a concept, I don't really think this show works. It literally does what it says on a tin. It is just a conversation with these performers. You don't get to see them sing, you don't get to see them perform as you would in other cabarets. In this series, all you get is to hear them being interviewed. And for £20 a ticket for one hour, I don't think that offers enough, if I'm honest, especially when a lot of these stars are interviewed regularly on YouTube channels, myself included, interview stars like this and put these videos online for free. So why would you want to pay to watch an interview? Whether the series continues to develop, I don't know. They do have an incredible lineup coming up, including Beverly Knight, Luke Bayer and Rachel Tucker, as well as YouTube sensation Amy Lovett. Whether those people will pull people in, I don't know. But like I say, it was an enjoyable afternoon and Emma Hatton certainly held her own. And she definitely was interesting and engaging. And as a stagey fan, it was delightful to listen to her tell stories about Wicked and about her career. But she had a microphone in her hand. Just sing something. Sing Defying Gravity. I went along to see Keith Ramsey as Judy Garland and the Phoenix Arts Club. Now this is an incredible show that Keith conceived himself. He performed distorted, reimagined versions of Judy Garland's songbook in an incredibly captivating and emotive way. As a performer, it was so physical and expressive. It was amazing. Whether this show would appeal to a traditional Judy Garland fan, I don't know. But I certainly loved seeing Keith present something completely different, slightly off the wall, slightly bizarre, but visually stunning. Here are a few videos from his performance. I really love you. final for Pride's Got Talent, organised by Pride in London. Having made it through several heats already, this evening was about the 11 remaining acts competing in front of a panel of judges. 
Now, I'll be honest, some of the acts weren't... It's really difficult to be objective about this because some of the acts, if I'm honest, weren't that great. But you have to step back and think, this is not what this is about. This show is about people being who they want, about expressing themselves, about sending out a message that we can be whoever we want. We can be proud. That is what Pride stands for. And that is why Pride's been going for 50 years. And although this is part of a political movement, as we know, there are still reports every day in the news about homophobic based attacks on people and about the level of suicide rates within the LGBT community. This show stands up and embraces everything that we all stand for. And for that, I have to commend everybody in this talent contest. Yes, some of them weren't great, but a lot of them are doing this in their spare time, as a hobby. It's not their full-time thing. It's a celebration and it was beautiful. And the winning entry was actually pretty special. Drag queen Frankly Desire performed a lip sync compilation with a very strong political message at its heart. And it was stunning to watch and definitely deserved to win. Here's the moment where Vinegar Strokes announced the winner and his thank you speech. say what we think and it doesn't matter <laughs> and you know, I think it's an amazing family that shows you what love is and that's important we are a community and together we can solve any problem and remember to give your hand to strangers please yeah. you don't know what so thank you thank you to the whole organization to the people that helped here to the state management that they were helping me with the life thank you to Ian to believe in us Thank you to Michael to show me what drag is. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Um, thank you, just thank you to all of you. So that's it for me from this week. Remember, this is only my opinion. You are entitled to disagree with me. Lots of people do. I really do appreciate you watching. And if you'd like to know more about what I got up to this week, please do read my blog, which goes a little bit more in detail. I hope you have a fantastic week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.